the previous lecture we were talking about the recent trends and uh, there was a whole list of the topics which I had uh, you know coined. This is what we have been discussing and I think we had a discussion about what can be done in today's uh, geoenvironmental engineering and by the professionals. And the last topic which I had mentioned here was uh, energy, uh, the recent trend is the energy. So, I am going to discuss a bit about it today and what are the innovative things which can be done. So, why I am asking this question is because when we talk about energy geotechnics it requires a lot of concepts and concepts of uh, conventional geotechnical engineering. So, this is becoming a very interesting thing in uh, environmental geotechnics and one of the lectures some of you were here energy and geomechanics and uh, we had a discussion, uh, good discussion when uh, Dr. Martin Rao was presenting his work on energy piles. So, that is a specific example of energy geotechnics or energy geomechanics where people are trying to explore number one and number two is exploit the geothermal energy. See the things are obvious because nowadays hydrocarbon is depleting everybody understands and as per some surveys you know if India has to progress very fast we have to produce lot of electricity we have to have lot of energy and our the energy requirements are in terms of terawatts. So, megawatt is now a obsolete term this used to be maybe 20 years back people used to talk about megawatts kilowatts nobody, nobody talks about in today's world of course. So, right now the energy requirements of the country are in terawatts. Now, the question is we have been discussing this since long that there are several ways of producing electricity and energy, but as some of you had rightly said long back that if I exploit you know coal or hydrocarbons their implications are going to be totally different and their impact on the environment is going to be extremely different. Now, this is where something very interesting starts and I think we were discussing the other day I think most probably in the first or second lecture. The question in front of the country is which way we should go how we should be able to produce more electricity, more energy. So, one of the answers is go thermal or go nuclear fine. It is a very simple statement appears to be very political, but if you analyze it as a technologist there is a lot of juice in this statement. So, when you are saying I would like to go as thermal you are going to exploit your uh, coal reservoirs, you are going to exploit them. Extraction of coal itself is a hazardous activity, toxic activity for all three components of environment, air, soil, rocks and ground water. I hope it must be clear to you by this time. Another thing is you have to incinerate tons of coals to produce certain amount of electricity. The reason is simple most of our units where the electricity is being generated are not functioning the way they should have functioned. This is where something like you know chemical engineers are working on beneficiation of coal. I do not know whether you have come across this or not. Coal has calorific value and what I should do is before I start using the coal I should do some beneficiation of coal that means, I should increase its calorific value by giving it either some chemical treatment or by giving it some mechanical treatment or by giving both. So, when you are pulverizing something you are enhancing its surface area fine. Now, surface area is not the right word we call it as a specific surface area. A specific surface area is the surface area of a particle per unit gram of it clear. Now, this is the term which is normally used in conventional geomechanics to characterize soils. Clays per se are going to have a very high specific surface area as compared to sands. Why? Because if you look at the microstructure of the clay you will find a lot of parking lots at nano scale where the cations and anions sorry not anions cations will come and get parked themselves fine. Now, because of this what happens the clays show hyperactivity is this correct. 
So, this is the whole idea of you know pulverizing anything and making it very uh, hyperactive. So, issue is only physical treatment of the coal is not going to help us. So, what we have to do is we have to give some chemical treatment to the coal and normally coal is treated with acids. Yeah, so basically no, but what pyrite has to do with the acids. So, normally sulfuric acid is used to remove the impurities in the coal dissolve and make it more perforated. If coal is not very perforated what will happen? Its firing capacity, its calorific value is going to be extremely less. So, idea is this coal business is a very messy thing starting from the way you take it out from the mines to the processing and I am sure you must have realized why I am emphasizing on this is the moment you give treatment to the coal pre-treatment to beneficiate it that means to enhance its calorific value lot of sludge comes out and this sludge is nothing but the acid wash. Now the question is where you are going to dump the acid wash, you got the point? So, sometimes when you get a chance please visit some of the coal refineries where the coal is refined. These are also known as coal washeries. The term used is coal washeries where you wash the coal literally to enhance its calorific value. So, this whole thing is very messy. It causes a lot of impact to the environment. So, what I was trying to tell you is that a certain amount of coal in tons or millions of tons is required to produce certain amount of electricity. Now, if I reverse the situation, if I deal with the radionuclides, what is going to happen? I require very few grams of radionuclides to produce tremendous amount of electricity because of fission and fusion process. Got it? So, there are two things which I have created out of this discussion. One is volume versus the product. Similarly, the byproduct versus the beneficial things which you are deriving out of something. So, in one case millions of tons of the ash is being produced for a limited amount of energy. On the other hand side you are using limited amount of fuel and then the byproducts of this incineration of the radioactive fuel is going to be extremely low but highly toxic. Now, you have to balance this equation. To come out of all these things what people are trying to do is they are going to resort to solar geothermal fine. Truly speaking as you must have realized from the previous days discussion solar does not come into the realm of environmental geotechnics as such except for designing the foundations. So, those of you who are coming from uh, different parts of let us say Rajasthan, Karnataka you must have seen even Delhi also on Delhi airport you must have seen a series of gang of solar uh, what do you call it solar heaters they have installed not solar heater what do you call it solar panels solar panels they have installed clear because solar energy is in abundance there. So, people have realized that energy is going to be a big crisis and this is where you know keeping this in mind geotechnical engineers have taken front foot you know hydel energy is producing very limited amount, amount of energy. Now, but particularly whenever you get a chance please go to Nepal, go to Bhutan. Now, these are the places where they were known for tourism earlier, no more any, no more anymore. Now, what they are doing is they are producing millions of watts of energy and they are transmitting it to India. So, there are many players who are now funding these countries Nepal, Bhutan and they are producing electricity Tata is one of them. So, most of the plants you will see are of Tata's and they are producing electricity there they bring it all the way to India. So, basically this is what is known as E financing and E credits which countries are giving to each other and in turn Indian technologists go there and help them in setting up the entire machinery and plant. But it is a very less amount of energy which is being produced, but yeah definitely if you go towards let us say Norwegian country, Scandinavian countries there you will find hydel energy produces enough electricity for their population because population density is extremely less clear in all these countries. So, water is good enough to produce electricity for them, but not in Indian scenario where population density is extremely high. Is this okay? That is true, wind energy, waves energy. 
so waves wind solar then comes geothermal geothermal then comes hydrothermal then comes nuclear and beyond all this is what i am going to discuss over here this is okay so this is what you can also call it as a evolution of energy so nowadays people are talking about evolution of energy scenario yes so the the uh, environmental impact due to hydroelectric energy is also very high what how uh, means uh, for example i know about the koina dam a large uh, amount of people uh, say there were settlement issues about that it's a social problem yeah yeah so this we discuss i think in the previous lecture or previous to previous lecture that how meda particles were created is it not so you are trying to create a urban dam and then there are some negative aspects first of all security and safety of the country itself is under question mark in today's world of all sorts of extremism clear agriculture energy two things and then third could be amusement dams are created for these three things amusement means i would like to create a resort and i would like to use backwaters and i like to generate money lavasa is a good example ambi valley is a very good example of you know beautiful example of what sahara did few years back so they created a water body and the entire city is now located including your strips and the water parks and what not the whole city is surrounding the water bodies lavasa is another good example go to western world you will find italy and all these places where you know the entire economy is governed by the water bodies there are a lot of negatives i don't know whether you have read in your hydraulics course or not creation of dams creates barren lands why prove this and that is the reason some sociologists were against creation of dams it's not only the project affected people who are getting displaced so as a technologist my first imprint is that the moment a dam is created the lands are going to become why so the moment you store water what is going to happen line of seepage so when you are studying the seepage analysis study it very carefully so all the seepage which takes place through the foundations of the dam when it comes out on the downstream side what it will do it will take out all the nutrients from the soil so we talk about different effects we talk about number one erosion of the soil which is what is known as suffusion i think long back i had used this term the fines coming out of the soil and soil getting you know cavities or the voids and the systems collapse the second issue is why these guys are against creation of dams and water bodies seepage induced migration of micro and macro nutrients so there is a reason why people are against creation of dams you got the point now there is a technical reason second thing is because of the flooding which takes place on the downstream side because of the seepage line again what will happen the soil loses its nutritional component why doctors advise you not to drink too much water particularly after certain age your sodium potassium salts will get washed out from your body clear and this will create problem so same thing is happening there also keeping this in view so geotechnical engineers have now started you know treating this as a challenge and everybody knows that we can't depend upon the fossil fuels anymore and this consequences are known very well and this is where we started the term energy geotechnics but the only issue is you know all geomaterials are extremely complex materials so suppose if i ask you a question the easiest concept is i should utilize the entropy of the system do you understand what is entropy in your 10 plus 2 physics you must have studied entropy and enthalpy the amount of disorder is enthalpy of course higher the entropy system becomes unstable clear that is fine chaos not randomness randomness is something which still has a pattern clear a guy you say he is very random what is the meaning of this but still he has a pattern he might be sleeping you know 12 hours based on the lunar time or martian time but the point is randomness is something different so what we are talking about is whenever a system has more and more enthalpy or entropy in it it becomes a thermodynamic system fine 
Now thermodynamic system will always have two components pressure and temperature. So based on this your Carnot cycle works, all sorts of engines work, you are designing all everything related to your boilers, compressor units, PV, T relationships clear. Now this concept becomes very interesting in geomechanics where what nature does? If you go to the deposits where you have lot of organic matter, particularly let us say ocean beds or estuarine beds, estuaries, river estuaries or lakes, lacustrine, you must have heard these words, lacustrine deposits, ocean beds, no, lacustrine is nothing but lake sediments. Bottom of the lake is known as lacustrine, L A C U S T R I N E. Clear? Similarly, seabeds, lacustrine, L A C U S T R I N E, lacustrine. Clear? So, similarly, seabeds, you will find lot of organic matters, soil itself is organic there. Imagine the water column, kilometers of water column, hundreds of meter water column, excessive pressure which is acting on this system. Fine? In organic matter, you will always have some sort of bioactivity. This is nothing but your mesogenic, mesogenic bacteria, which I think Jeevan discussed long back. So, when decomposition is going on of the organic soils based on bacterial activity, and remember the hydraulic conductivity of clays is extremely low. Have you studied all this? Particularly compacted state. 10 power minus 12 meter per second, 10 power minus 14 meter per second, clear. So, what is going to happen? Until now, we have been talking about only conduction of fluid through porous media, but now there is a situation where gas gets formed because of decomposition of the organic matter deep beneath the ocean bed or the lake bed, and then this gas has a tendency to migrate up, clear. And imagine if the pressures are very high and temperatures are low, what is going to happen? This gas which is coming out of the bacterial activity is going to get dissoluted in water. First, number one, thermodynamics. Number two, what will happen? Very high pressures, very low temperatures and liquid phase present, chances are that this gas in the dissoluted form will get crystallized. So, there will be crystals of gases entrapped in water which are going to be present in these type of deposits, fine. Now, this is where most of the money is being spent all over the world. We call them as hydrates, gas hydrates. So, this is another thing like carbon sequestration I will be talking about and I will be giving an idea about what are gas hydrates also. So, those of you who might get a chance to deal with the thermodynamics of soils which you have never heard about yet. Chemical engineers, you do lot of thermodynamics, clear? And we learn it from you, of course, we have been taught in our early days. So, it is very easy for us to understand, you know, thermodynamics of soil sediments, a three phase system, a multi phase system and how it is going to behave to P, V, T conditions, clear? Typical Boyle's law, gas law, that is it. Is this part clear? Now, the beauty is how you are going to trap them out, how you are going to take them out and produce, produce energy out of it. The next thing before I go to the gas hydrate is carbon sequestration. I think I had given you some idea in the previous lecture what carbon sequestration is all about. Suppose if I have a, you know, deposit and this deposit is a sort of a aquifer. So, by definition, aquifers are the ones which have high permeability, high porosity, clear? And at the micro level, you will realize that these pores are not interconnected. See, this is how nature helps you in trapping something which goes inside. If all these pores are interconnected, what would have happened? Something would have come in and it would have gone out, clear? It is not like that. So, most of these aquifers, you will observe their pores are, though they are interconnected, but majority of these pores are dead end pores. So, air or water enters, but it cannot exit and it remains there. So, the idea is this concept people have exploited quite a lot. This is where mechanical engineers, chemical engineers and civil engineers, geotechnical engineers work together. 
Now what are we going to do? CO2 CO2 from the atmosphere if I collect by using a pump can this be done easily? You have suckers. So you can always design suction pumps which will collect carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and then force them into these type of aquifers. Are you realizing this? So I will make it easy I am not going to go much of permeability and all. And remember these aquifers are going to be at a greater depth as compared to the ground surface few hundreds of meter deep that means the pressures which are going to act on this systems are extremely high. And if I create a situation over here so that the temperatures drop what I can do? I can crystalline something crystallize something which is a contaminant in the atmosphere. So what I can do is I can convert carbon dioxide into a liquid phase and that liquid phase I can force into the aquifer and I can freeze it. This is what nature did long back. You got the point? What will happen slowly and slowly carbon dioxide will release from this liquid phase depending upon the environmental conditions and this carbon dioxide becomes a part of the hydrocarbon cycle. So what I have done, I have recharged the aquifers which have become depleted of the hydrocarbons, excellent technology conceptually. So basically the way you charge your mobile phones every day, what you are doing here? From one side I am taking out the hydrocarbons for sustaining my society. Everybody requires petrol, everybody requires LNG, everybody requires cooking gas, everybody requires what not, clear? So from one side you are taking out the energy and from second side you are pumping in all noxious and toxic gases into the aquifers and creating a system which is going to be self-sustained. What does the term sequestration means? It means the complete... I will come to that, yes, so good that you asked this question. Sequestration is something where I will... Sequestration is forcing something inside, filling in, clear? Sequestration is something where I am trying to pack something into something. So here what I am doing, carbon dioxide I am sucking and I am packing into the aquifers, fine? Sir, so this rich uh, carbon, hydrocarbon aquifers are then used like they come to the normal state or? No, first thing please you should realize is you are doing two things here. One is you are getting rid of the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, cleaning up act. So people are going to give you carbon credits for this, number one, monetary gain. Number two, as I said, this carbon dioxide you are pumping into the aquifers and they become future source of energy. So you are recharging the aquifers. How did coal form? How petroleum products got formed? These are all geological time scales, clear? So today you are doing something, you are giving back to the nature and maybe after a few years, hundreds of years, whatever carbon dioxide you are pumping in will become a source of energy, recharging, clear? Very interesting subject. Carbon dioxide is compressible? Exactly. So this is where, this is where the cost economics come in the picture. I should be doing a process which is not very expensive, that is it. So answer to your question is apart from technical issues, the economics. I do not want to fiddle with carbon dioxide at all. I will just suck it in the gaseous form, whatever liquefies, let it liquefy and I will force it into the aquifer, that is it. Remember, remember you are not going to gain anything immediately, clear? So if I am putting in money, there is no immediate gain. Either they will crystallize or they will, they will remain there, they will got stuck into the soil mass and this is how your recharging of the carbon and formation of hydrocarbon will take place, yes. Yeah, so I can always fiddle with, you know, if I know this material and if I know the type of gas at what pressure I am doing, I can always fiddle with the temperatures. So this is where actually his point gets clubbed. I will form a slurry of brine and I will circulate it in. So the moment you circulate brine slurry, what is going to happen? Temperature is going to drop down, clear? So I have created air conditioning system inside, lower down the temperature. What is going to happen now? You have lowered the temperature, pressures are very high, gas is migrating to the system, crystallization and this becomes a source of energy for you tomorrow. Now try different type of combinations, whatever comes to your mind. Use simple physics and chemistry principles and apply them over here. I am just discussing concepts, fine. Now second thing is you must have realized, see when technologists take up a problem, they do not take up a problem only for one cause or one effect. Clear? I might be having something other than what I am doing here. Now, 
suppose if I change this context and if I say it is not a deposit, it is a coal bed, then what will happen? Suppose if I say this is coal bed. So, coal bed is always associated with the coal bed methane, clear? Do you get some ideas what can be done? So, suppose if this is a coal bed, what do I achieve out of it? Very good, 5 minutes back I told you it is not a commercially feasible thing, but immediately I am giving you another logic that if I change the context, now what is going to happen? If it is a coal seam where a lot of methane is entrapped, what I have to do to expel out the methane gas? Flushing. So, this is what is known as flushing of methane. So, right now we are discussing only concepts. Once you have understood the concepts, mathematical models can be done. And once you have done the mathematical models, what can be done? Laboratory experiments, field experiments, data generation and generation of empirical relationships. Are you realizing what you are going to do now? So, the moment your empirical relationships are ready, what can you do further? Put them in a computer software and make a database. Clear? So, if I give you attributes of these things with the help of let us say some GPS scheme, this is satellite imagery, you know that this is the place where I should go and I should buy this land at any cost because tomorrow I am going to get millions of dollars out of this. Clear? And who knows in my own courtyard there could be a situation like this. So, rather than doing gardening on the top of the surface, I will be doing gardening definitely, but this is what my first job becomes. Are you getting the point? So, this is where lot of multi phase physics is being used in modern day geotechnical engineering. Yeah, I will explain to you what is flushing. Out of methane and carbon dioxide, which one is going to be heavier? Definitely more than CH4. So, when you are filling something with a denser fluid, what will happen to the lighter fluid? Displaced, clear? The same thing is happening in your Deccan Peninsula. Most of the South Indian and coastal regions what is happening, all these deposits are continuously being impregnated by the salt water, sea water. So, what happens to the fresh water? Fresh water gets displaced and poor guys they are not getting fresh water to drink. Salt water intrusion, carbon dioxide intrusion into the aquifers to expel out methane gas. Is this point clear? Now, sit down and when you have studied all these pandas of soil mechanics, then you can do perfect modeling. And those of you who have studied, I am sure you can model this. A liquid flux is displacing the another liquid flux. So, how much I should be producing methane gas and I will operate somewhere here a gas filling plant beautiful business in today's world. You are getting two types of profits, remember one is government is very happy with you that carbon dioxide is being pumped into it, you get lot of money there and second thing is you are running a business of bottling cooking gas, fine. So, flushing of a gas is being done by another gas, so I think this is what you two were discussing and now I can control this PVT conditions the way I wanted to because I am a technologist. So, I can always control the pressures, volumes, how much volume is to be produced and what temperature. This is part clear. So, this is becoming a very interesting subject in the western world where people are. So, where people are trying to study sequestration. So, coming back to your question, sequestration is filling of something into something. Here, carbon dioxide is being sucked from the atmosphere and filled into the aquifers. You should try to understand what is the meaning of this green movement, clear and practice it properly. So, the question is. Your, your point is a 100 percent logic which is given by the guys who believe too much in those who are supposed to be called as watchdogs of the environment. So, what should I do? I should not breathe, I should not eat, I should not sleep, all these questions come. So, your question is technically correct and show to people that nothing happens to the ground water. Now, because you have raised this point, write down another word which you should google, it is known as hydrofracking. Hydrofracking, I do not know whether you have really thought about it or not. If I understand that 
it has lot of gas in it, lot of hydrocarbon in it, clear. One of the ways is to push carbon dioxide take out methane, it is a difficult process. Rather than this, what should I do? Easy way, fracture the entire deposit, destruction. How would you do that? You drill wells and I told you sometime back that nowadays you can go even lateral drills also. We have mastered this technology and then force a fluid at very high pressure and this pressure should be higher than the tensile strength and crushing strength of the rocks and the aquifers. What is going to happen? If you are forcing something, sequestering something at a very high pressure and this pressure is much more higher than the crushing and the blasting strength of the material, what is going to happen? The system is going to get fractured. How do you take out juice from fruits? The first thing is mash them, clear? Crush them and after crushing, what do you do? You put it in a mixer and take out the juice, density separation. The same thing is being done over here. So, I will use some very high crushing strength materials in the fluid which is going to be passed through the system and at very high pressure I am going to fracture all these deposits. So, the moment you have fractured it permeability increases, whatever fluid was inside these deposits will come out and then I can put another borehole over here and I can collect the entire thing. Now, this is definitely going to cause lot of contamination to the ground water and that is the reason in recent days hydro fracking has been stopped, but these are all environmental issues, geo environmental issues. So, you have to prove that your activity of fracturing of the rocks and the deposits is not anti environment, it is environmental safe, it is environmental because you are using the uh, injectable materials which might be harmful to the flora, fauna, groundwater table, it is anti environmental activity. But then for survival sake what should I do? I should close down all the factories. This is a destructive game. So, here what you have done? You have destroyed the entire structure of the system. You have crushed it. Now, you cannot reuse it. So, please tell me one thing. When you are making all these soft drinks and you are using water, from where you are using all this water? When your other villages are not getting even a single drop of water. Why this type of drops are being created? Are they natural or they are man-made? Think about it. See, you guys are technologists, remember, there must be some reason. All these reasons, regions where, you know, these are the man-made droughts. Why? Because some industrialist is sucking out all the water for creating its, to fill up its pockets. You got the point? So, that is the issue. Now, the issue is here you have fractured everything. Is this correct? Aquifers are of two types. So, he is saying aquifers are of two types, bounded and unbounded. So, if this is the ground surface and I might be having an aquifer over here, this is the aquifer, clear? Basically porosity difference between this soil and this soil, water retention capacity is more. Now, this is a typical case of a bounded aquifer. So, when I drill a, drill a well here, the well hydraulics is going to be different completely because water is available only in this zone, clear? Now, when he is talking about infinite aquifers or unbounded aquifers. So, in that case what is going to happen is this is the ground surface and this whole thing might be aquifer. That means, the upper boundary is not well defined and it is flushing with the ground surface. So, the moment I put a borehole, your water table will be like this drop. In this case, it is going to be a combination of something because there might be some water table over here or whatever. So, your point is correct. So, then you have to maybe understand what type of situation you are dealing with. It is, it is slightly complicated. You see, you cannot be a chooser. Please remember, you have to negotiate with the nature. So, nature has given you an aquifer which is either bounded or which is unbounded. You have to do mapping, reconnaissance and you have to use some satellites, imagery to understand where the aquifers are. So, basically that you have must have heard about dielectric constant. All of you, dielectric constant. When you do impedance spectroscopy, we talk about the electrical resistance, which is impedance and dielectric constant. Dielectric constant is related to the moisture content of the aquifer. Dielectric constant is related to the electromagnetic wave velocity. Clear? So, if I am doing elect, uh, uh, satellite imagery, 
what I am measuring is I am measuring the dielectric constant contrast and based on this I can tell you that at this depth the aquifer is and then I can map it clear. There is something which uh, you can use whenever you feel like. So, I have talked about several things you know uh, under the category of energy geomechanics. I talked about cold bed methane, I talked about carbon sequestration, thermal piles this guy already discussed carbon what else is remaining. Now, we can do shale gas. So, there is another fashionable term in the market these days. Those of you who are interested, please google it. There are several papers which are available on shale gas. In our country, two big organizations tried to exploit shale gas. Shale is nothing but a type of a rock, soft rock, porous rock, clear. Have you seen this coconut? the coconut with green coconut which is normally used for drinking coconut water and then malai which you take out. So, how do you take out this water from the coconut? You cut it from the top clear and then the thin seam goes out and the moment you must have sometimes water comes out also because of hydrostatic pressure is something like that only. See whenever you drink and eat something you should get these ideas. The technologists get these ideas you know what how things are happening in nature. Is same thing is this correct. So, the moment you cut the top crust of the rock are you aware of this anticlines and synclines see whenever two plates collide plates are nothing but the tectonic motion I think you are aware of that. So, because of collision of the two plates what is going to happen this type of structures are getting formed these are known as anticlines these are known as synclines where oil would be should I drill over here or should I drill over here it can never be syncline it has to be anticline. Why? Simple hydrodynamics this was the initial surface and what I told you is because of tectonic motion. So, two plates come and hit each other and there is a formation like this what is going to happen? This zone is always going to have a high pressure that means all the fluid will come and get deposited over here. You see what is happening this is oozing out effect. So, you have done this sigma 3, sigma 1 thing in uh, geomechanics, active and passive earth pressure you must have done. So, when sigma 3 is more than sigma 1, horizontal pressure is more than vertical pressure what is going to happen? There is a dilation. So, what has happened? Billiards balls clear next time you go to your hostel and just push the balls from both the sides like this. What is going to happen? See this is the action. What will happen? All the balls will ooze out clear. Ice cream scoops the best example. So, what do you do? You dip the cup like scoop like this and then split it like this clear scooping it out. What is happening here? So, the moment plates press each other all the fluids will get accumulated in this zone. So, most of the hydrocarbon specialists what do they do? They try to locate anticlines by using all sorts of imagery techniques. It could be electrical resistivity, it could be thermal resistivity, it could be IR camera, infrared, it could be microwave by using satellites clear that is it. So, the moment I identify these places these are the deposits of the oil hydrocarbon. So, what I will do I will put a oil well over here. Now, nothing is to be done why everything will keep coming automatically that is it <laughs> you got the point now funda clear forever. You need not to do anything just like cold drinks. So, the moment you put a straw and open the bottle inside they have lot of gases. So, many times straw itself comes out have you experienced this or not many times straw itself comes out of the bottle why because of gases same thing is happening over here. So, most of the deposits are available in anticline. So, shale gas is something which is going to be like this. So, the moment I chop off the crust the way you do in the green nariel coconut what will happen all the water will can be sucked. So, shale gas is also an interesting subject on which people are working, but we have realized that it is not going to be productive much because this is where you have to do lot of hydrofracking. You have to fracture the crust to take out the water clear or oil or gas. First of all drilling please remember can you guess what will be the depth of this drilling? What is the world record right now? where people are and where we are as a nation in terms of drilling 
Russians claim 14.5 kilometers vertical drills. India is somewhere at close to 5000 something. These are drilling techniques. So, the question is the more you drill the more money you get, the more resources you can get. Coming back to your point, hard surface unless it is broken, drilling is going to be extremely expensive. Clear? What is the soft relatively? With respect to granite, with respect to basalt, shales are supposed to be soft rocks, but truly speaking they are they are rocks. Another name given to shale rocks is cap rocks. Write down this word and check it on net. Read about all these things. Cap rocks, C A P cap rock. So, you have to remove the caps from the rock to get something which is precious. All these are the technologies which are normally adopted by uh, hydrocarbon scientists and technologists. Of course, geotechnical engineers are also doing this. Fine. So, energy geotechnics is very, very exciting subject. So, moving on to the gas hydrates, which is something very close to my heart. I am guiding a lot of guys in this area. Recently, we got funding from Mobil, Exxon Mobil. They are oil major and they are the guys who are very much interested in sponsoring research on hydrocarbon, future of hydrocarbon utilization. They do not do anything themselves, but they sponsor research. So, basically, this is a hydrate which we are talking about. Gas getting formed because of bacterial activity, getting trapped in the sediments and water after dissolution a bit because of very high pressure and low temperature. And this is how the cage like structure gets formed. So, what I am showing here is in a water molecule, you have a methane molecule which is trapped. So, the yellow thing is carbon and then you have CH4, clear. Now, what people say is, is something also known as sometimes also known as a dirty ice because the, it is a very sluggish color. Roughly, if you take out 1 meter cube of hydrate bearing sediments and if you try to tap the methane, it will be 220 meter cube. Let me repeat it. 1 meter cube of the gas hydrate sediments are going to produce 220 meter cube of methane gas. You can imagine. So, this has become an easy prey. Everywhere particularly now India is also a major in this subject. <coughs> they are trying to find out the deposits where you have clathrates. Clathrates is the word which is used for defining gas hydrates C L A T H R A T E S clathrates. So, clathrates are nothing but the ice formed structures in the sediments because of typical PVT conditions where methane is trapped in the water molecules. Is this part clear? Clathrates C L A T H R A T E S clathrates. Have you heard about mid ocean fires? It is very common. Mid ocean fires. Hmm? So all of a sudden, you will find somewhere in the ocean there will be a big flame appearing. Type it on Google. The beautiful movies are there on mid ocean fires. Whenever you go towards the swampy area, do you find bubbles coming out? On the roadside also sometimes there are small, small potholes, swampy areas where you will find, you just look at closely, you will find you know bubbles coming out all the time. What are these bubbles made up of? Methane gas. So, too much of enrichment of the methane gas in the ocean bed may create a situation where the entire methane gas may come out of the ocean bed and then there could be a fire the moment it comes and interacts with the atmosphere. So, in the middle of the sea you will find that there is a fire, very good. It is a good sign for technologists that something is there, let us let us explore. But suppose as long as it is fired, very fine, but suppose if it is not getting completely, it is not becoming a flame, what is going to happen? Methane clouds and what are methane clouds? 
are they good for the environment ecosphere so you are getting the point so all these things which you do for exploration breaking of the shale gas sequestration you were talking about everything has its own ill effects so methane gas if it is not tapped properly and any disaster happens what will happen the entire methane gas will go into the atmosphere so that is why there are so many challenges how to handle this thing very carefully so first of all it is very difficult to understand what volume of the methane gas hydrates are lying there it requires lot of amount of energy and work second thing is when you are extracting everything it may so happen the entire ocean bed may collapse you are drilling at some place as she was talking about the entire gas or the fluid gets gushes out and in the process what's going to happen the entire sea floor may subside subsidence there are a lot of movies on subsidence in youtube see what is the effect of subsidence how many of you are reading this uh, metro 3 which is being constructed in bombay in times of india yes they are creating underground tunnel connecting four stations so what is going to happen how come subsidence is coming in the picture the technical issue is if i am constructing a station at a depth of 27 meter 30 meter in the ground what i have to do you are all civil engineers first thing is you have to take care of the water so the moment you cut open a space the ground water that to in the coastal area from there sea is hardly few meters not even hundreds of meters clear all this water will gush in so the moment water gushes in what is going to happen subsidence all these buildings there is a hue and cry going on right so many rtis and pli what do you call it pils have been filed why so the moment you are constructing all these things because of the removal of water there could be a situation where all the buildings may settle unpredictably clear subsidence is the word please check it out same thing is going to happen in a global level when you are extracting the methane gas hydrates because these volumes are large so the moment you are taking out from somewhere there could be a pressure drop at other side and the entire ocean bed may subside now this is not going to happen in controlled way clear so what will happen there will be cracks in the ocean bed and the moment cracks come all this gas will come out and it will become a part of the atmosphere ecosystem greenhouse effect methane is the most deadly greenhouse gas so you basically you are playing with a deadly game but then this is where the energy is so then the question is how to take out this entire methane gas in the most simple controlled manner and this is where these type of guys are working on it do these uh, cracks uh, like the subsidence does it also cause tsunamis in water does mm. methane extraction also lead to that very good so suppose this is the mean sea level so suppose this is the mean sea level all right and this is the ocean bed and somewhere there you have a what is this known as fault how tsunamis are formed this fault may become active fault becoming active means one portion of the ground will remain as it is the second portion may go down or come up so relative motion along the faults and these faults are natural ge geological structures fine you can't have any control on this so the moment this happens this much amount of let us say deformation in the seabed is how many kilometer cubes of volumes is going to sink and what's going to happen this whole water is going to gush in you understand so there is a void formation taking place all this water will come over here and there is a hydrodynamics which is getting created so earthquakes can cause tsunamis fault start dormant may become active and because of this people say that gas hydrate should be taken out you should not sit very happily that i have these gas hydrates and i should be very happy and they are going to be there forever if this type of geological accidents happen things will be difficult see we are blaming contamination because of vehicular emissions there is a school of thought which says hydrocarbon extraction is creating much more contamination to the atmosphere as compared to the vehicular 
emissions. These are very intricate things. Are you realizing this or not? You cannot say that the environment is getting damaged because of vehicular emissions. Nature is supreme. What nature does is much more than what you have created and they are running on the roads. You are getting the point. The magnitudes are totally different. All these are very, very debatable things. What is bottom simulating reflector? Good question. This is the mean sea level and somewhere here you have seabed. Clear? Suppose if I ask you a question, what will be the thermal profile inside the seabed and in the water column? What will your answer? Is this remains uniform or it drops or it increases? What happens? So, truly speaking, there could be a thermal profile over here. Mostly, as you go deep in the water, water temperature decreases. On surface, it is more. But now the role reverses. So, the moment you come here, you may find that the temperature will start increasing. So, the zone in which the temperature inversion is maximum creates a sort of a system which is also known as a mirror image of the seabed. Now, this is what is known as BSR, bottom simulating. So, that means truly speaking BSRs and seabeds are related in terms of the temperature profile and sometimes density. So, this is what is known as reflector. Reflector means it is going to reflect everything. What is going to reflect temperatures? Now, in this zone because of the temperature effects, the chances are that the bacteria will get active, activated and it will start forming methane gas. In this zone only because of temperature variation and the moment bacteria gets activated, the methane which is getting formed will try to get captured over here up to a certain level and that level is called as hydrate stability zone. Read our papers if you are really very much interested. That is what is known as HSZ, hydrate stability zone. So, there would be a, another layer here which would be giving me only hydrates. Clear? So, this is how we define things for the sake of understanding. Another thing is, until now in fourth year geomechanics, third year geomechanics, you might be studying only fluid flow, water, seepage. But in all these circumstances, you must be noticing that here we are talking about multi-phase flow, gases and water flowing together, clear? So, this type of mechanics becomes very, very complicated, where we talk about gas conductivity, not only the hydraulic conductivity. You must have done only hydraulic conductivity by this time, is it not? So, this is where we start talking about gas conductivity and to be practical, it is a two-phase system, gases dissoluted in water, gases dissoluted in hydrocarbons and a multi-phase system where hydrocarbons, water and gases might be together and they are trying to flow through the porous media. So, from here the environmental geomechanics starts. These are the applications of what you study in your basic undergraduate level, put them together piecewise and all these complex situations get created.